What's up everybody, I'm the Mangoos, you are awesome, and today we're going to take a close look at Gideon in Predecessor, Fault, and Overprime. I'm going to go ability by ability and check out the differences between animations, visual effects, sound effects, just, just anything worth noting, really. At the end, I'll give each game a star rating out of 5 for how well they did with each ability. While I will talk about some of the differences in the kit, I don't really want to touch on how much damage they deal or anything, because that's a balance issue and you can't really do a side by side on that sort of thing. I'll have the name of the game on the bottom left of the screen that corresponds with the footage, and I'll also be looking a bit at Gideon's original Paragon Overview trailer. Before we get into it though, I want to say that we'll be ignoring the forest here to take a very close look at the trees. If we back out and ask the simple question, which Gideon was more fun to play, well that's going to be your personal opinion, but I preferred Predecessor's implementation. You'll see in this video that Omeda still has some work to do with the animations and such, but after playing all three games, I had the most fun playing Pred's Gideon. Let's start out with the most basic of abilities, his basic attack. Predecessor's version looks pretty good. You get a different visual and audio indicator for when you hit or miss. His basic sounds really clean and matches what I remember from Paragon. The travel time on the basic feels pretty good and he shifts from one hand to the other pretty smoothly. However, the, the projectile seems to come from under his hand like he's pitching a softball at it, it doesn't quite match the extension of his hand. Fault has very vibrant visual effects for Gid's basic. The projectile has good speed that matches the rest of the game, and it comes directly from his palm. The visual effects match the animation perfectly, he shoots within his hand extends. He has a different visual effect for a hit or a miss, and the sound effects ain't bad, but it seems like it's kind of missing something. And he does transition smoothly between multiple casts of his basic. Overprime's Cosmos has pretty good visual and sound effects, but the, the projectile is so fast that you almost don't even see it. The animations are still pretty smooth, you do get different visual effects on a hit or a miss. The audio effect on hit is very chunky, I, I kinda like it, but I can see where others wouldn't. I give this one to Fault, they nailed everything important with his basics. Gideon's Q, where he drops a meteor, is about the only ability that is one for one the same across the board. Makes sense with it being a very iconic Paragon ability. Pred has very nice visual effects, but it's the sound effects I really like here. You get the whoosh from the startup and then the slam when it breaks. Targeting the Q in Pred was very intuitive. The reticle always seems to spawn where I thought it would, and moving it around the map was smooth. The animation doesn't quite match up though, you perform the full hands up to down motion, but the rock actually hits well after the animation ends. Fault's visual effects are good, uh, all three games the visual effects were pretty good, it's just pretty much the same thing across the board here. Targeting is okay, but it does seem to hiccup when moving the reticle over larger terrain variances. The animation matches up perfectly, the rock slams just as your arms finish the downward movement. Sound effects are okay, but they kind of lack an ending oomph for the shatter. Overprime's visual effects are once again good, but almost too fast to see. The animation matches up well when casting this by itself, however casting a naked Q in Overprime was kinda a mistake. Sound effects have the reverse problem of fault, the final slam is there, but the startup is a bit lacking. Oh, really good back. There, uh Targeting was fine on smooth terrain, but horrible around any sort of ledge. If we were including efficacy, this would go to Overprime because this should hit like a truck and you could cast it repeatedly, but that's not what we're doing here. Vault certainly has the best animations, but I'm giving this one the predecessor because of the intuitive targeting. Gideon's Teleport is another iconic ability, however, Meta did change one thing about it. All three games allow your teammates to take the portal, but in Predecessor, enemies can take it as well. They're slowed on the other side, but if you're chasing Gideon with like a Feng Miao who can dash on the other side, this is no longer a get out of jail free card. Pred's animation is good and you, you actually see him throw a projectile that becomes the portal. The sound effect is good and ties in with his other abilities. Just all around well done and the targeting is once again very intuitive. Fault's portal goes as soon as your hand finishes the animation, which is kinda nice. The visual effects are really well done, and the sound effects ain't bad either. 
where you think you're going to go with it and where you actually end up can be two very different things though. Overprime's portal is an immediate teleport, almost like a blink. The visual and audio effects are good, and I, I didn't really have any problems with the targeting. Just all around solid. You can't catch me. This is a rough one to judge since they all did a great job with the teleport, but I think Pred edges the other two out with the added functionality and just better targeting. Gideon's alt fire was changed in the middle of Paragon, and it's not the same ability across all three games. Overprime changed it to an AoE center pull that lets you line up your Q or, or simply displace enemies to interrupt them. Pred went with the straight line meteor that passes through enemies and explodes on the ground or at the end of its travel. The animation doesn't quite match up with the cast of the ability, the visual effects are good and the sound effects are fantastic. The problem is that the rock spawns above your head. This combined with poor animation matchup makes targeting for this extremely wonky and hard to get used to. It's jarringly bad. Fault also has the straight rock. The animation matches the cast really well. The visual effects are great with the rock spawning from a portal produced from your hand. And the audio is pretty good. Targeting for this ability is very intuitive. Overprime went with the suction ability instead of the straight rock. There really isn't much of an animation for this. The visual effect kind of doesn't exist either beyond the targeting reticle. Um, audio is kind of the same as landing a basic attack. Targeting works well as long as you aren't near a ledge. I think Fault is a very clear winner here. Overprime's RMB didn't really have a visual or audio effects associated with it, and it was stupid overpowered. Predecessor did such a poor job with this ability that it damn near brings his entire kit down. Gideon's ultimate functions a bit different between the games. Predecessor's ult functions about the same as it did in Paragon, and not, not the overpowered stun version from late Paragon. Fault added a shield per enemy hit with the ultimate, and the damage forms more of a sphere than a cylinder, meaning you have to be pretty close to enemies for the ultimate to take effect. Overprime also gives you a shield, but I don't know if anything affects it. The pull is crazy on Overprime's ultimate, and it functions like a cylinder extending to the ground no matter how high up you are. Not much to say for Pred, the ultimate looks good, it sounds good, and it functions how you would expect it. Uh, same with Fault, it looks good and sounds good, I do like the added spice of having to risk yourself to use it effectively, and the shielding gives it some utility beyond being a team killer. Enemy has been slain. In Overprime, the ultimate looks fantastic with extra visual effects on your screen edge. The sound is done really well, and you can hear when the ultimate deals damage to enemies. The damage and pull extending all the way down was a little overpowered, but I enjoy being able to store into the clouds and kill the little ants below me. You did get some odd off-centering at Overprime, which I don't quite understand. I'm going to give this one to Overprime hands down. I want Gideon's ultimate ability to be an impressive spectacle when I cast it, and Overprime delivers that experience in spades. Predecessor and Fault have both added passive abilities to Gideon's kit, while Overprime did not. I guess there may be something to be said about simplicity, but I think the passives add to the kit without adding too much complexity. Predecessor's passive is Gideon's old school RMB, Burden. After you land an ability, you can basic attack to apply a tether that deals damage and slows. Fault has a fairly complex passive. After you hit an ability, you mark a target. Hitting them with another ability in a certain time frame resets any abilities that are on cooldown. So you can drop a rock, throw a rock, and then immediately drop another rock, or you know, however you want to do it. You also have a visual indicator beyond the UI with Gideon's hands glowing when his passive is off cooldown. I think Fault has the far superior passive, even if it can be a bit overpowered at times. Lining up a three-piece is just, it's very satisfying. It's also fun to portal into the tower range, hit a one-two combo, then just portal right back out. Both Fault and Overprime have done their own unique skins for Gideon. Predecessor didn't have skins in the last stress test since it was meant to test servers and not overall functionality. Fault has the Astro Gideon skin, which is a really very good looking skin. Kinda Iron Man-ish, but it's, it's still, it's really well executed. Overprime has the Chrono Shinobi skin. I forget what it's actually called, but I like my name for it better anyway. 
Overprime just flat out knocks it out of the park with their, their skins, and this one is no exception. They're better at the skin game than Epic ever was. Overprime wins at this category. One last category here, just walking around the map. Sure, it may not be the most interesting thing in the world, but you're always moving, so I think it's important to get the movement right. I'll say right off the top that Predecessor's movement animations are far and away the best out of the three. Gideon has inertia when he starts and stops, his steps shorten when he moves down a slope, he really digs in and charges when he's running upstairs. Gideon feels connected to his environment in Predecessor. Movement isn't bad in fault, and they do a nice job of using audio to differentiate what type of surface you're walking on. However, it can feel a bit like you're walking on a transparent surface an inch above the map and not actually walking on the map itself. Most of your rotations in Overprime are made in travel mode, and since Gideon flies in the animation, you don't get to see too much of his movement. I do enjoy seeing his old travel mode animation, though. As far as actually like in a fight, I get the same feeling as Fault that my character exists just above the map and not on the map. Like a Photoshop job that's well done, but you can still tell that something's off. And that's my comparison video for Gideon. I know people are going to want me to do all sorts of heroes and I'll try my best, but please bear in mind that not all the games have the same heroes and I don't have footage of every hero I played, so I do apologize that I can't do every single hero they have in common. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more third-person MOBA updates. This is the Mangoose signing off. You guys have a good one. Mangoose! Special shout out to channel members, iBloodHunter, Jelly Knees, Meow Mix for Men, Stunt, Raven, and Blastoise King.